guys, it's Athena. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well today. For today, I wanted to just do like a hang out with me, sit down, chit chat, talk about some life stuff and just different topics I've been thinking about and stuff like that. So I hope you guys are all doing well and today's Friday right now. So thank goodness school's over for this week, but definitely there's always still homework, right? <laughs> So I have to study for a uh, anthropology. Um, I have a quiz on Monday, so I have that to study for and stuff. So I'm a little nervous about that, but you know, fingers crossed it goes well and everything. Um, let's see. So just for today, like I was saying, it's not really any like rhyme or reason. It's just sit down, get ready with me. I just wanted to like have a chit chat with you guys. I like to be able to just sort of you know, express myself and really, um, just sort of talk about things that, um, I'm like, you know, dealing with or, um, that I just, you know, that are on my mind and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, uh, let's see, let's get started with some makeup and then maybe I can like figure out how I want to like, um, you know, correlate my thoughts and everything. Um, I don't think I'm going to go in with any primer today. I did moisturize using the um, Olay SPF uh, moisture fund, um, lotion. So I just went in with that. And I mean, for re like for me, that's all I need really for primer. I do like primers, but I just think I like the glowy look and stuff like that. So I think that I'm just going to um, stick with that for today's video. And yeah, so let's see gonna go in with some foundation and for being blonde it's really hard to not get the foundation uh, in your hair that's something for sure that can be kind of hard to watch out for but yeah the school semester is kicking my butt for sure I mean it is it's been rough like um, in the sense of just like trying to get you know all the work done and you know, being accountable for everything, like, it's, it's a lot for sure, so I'm always grateful for Friday and Saturday because I don't have classes on those days, so I'm able to just sort of, like, you know, um, let my mind, of course I have homework and, like, you know, reading and stuff, but at least I don't necessarily have to be at class or anything like that, um, unless I need, like, math help or something because I do I do have tutors for math and stuff like that but other than that these days are like my days to just sort of like get everything done but they're just a lot more relaxed so I definitely appreciate that for sure and um yeah so just been doing that and you know just riding the waves of life and stuff so that's always interesting um but yeah um I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about um like mm, feeling a little bit lost in terms of like spirituality and you know I am not a religious person I would say that I am pretty like non-religious I do of course if something happens you know I pray and you know to whoever's out there to like help or you know for guidance and strength and stuff to get through like hard things and you know, I, I will pray for people, like, you know, if I say I, I'll pray for you, like, I'll pray to Jesus or God or something, but I myself am not necessarily a spiritual person, um, and I don't know, I, I think that it's, it's hard because when you don't have anything to believe in, you just kind of feel a little lost, at least in my opinion, that's just how I feel, like, I feel, like, alone, and of course it's really great to feel like you have something that you can believe in and you know really sort of I don't know that's there that's comforting for you that feels like a higher power that kind of thing um and so it's just it's a little hard when you don't you don't have that and I mean I'm very open-minded I do think that there are some really great things about like Christianity and in all religions I think that there's like some really great concepts and ideas and morals and 
you know, it depends. Not not everything I agree with, obviously, but um, for a lot of stuff, I, I do think that there are, there are good things um, that come from, you know, being religious, but there are also other things that, you know, I try and stay away from and I, I don't really associate with myself. Um, but that being said, you know, I'm aware of, like, universe and sort of like, you know, um, the, what is it called? Um, it's the secret, but it's like the, it's like positive affirmations, but like what you put out there to the universe is what you're going to get back in life. Um, so that type of thing. And, oh, the law of attraction, that's what it is. So I am aware of, aware of that. And I do, I do believe in that. And like, you know, manifesting, you know, your thoughts and your mind and everything and, you know, putting stuff out there if you want it to happen or if you want guidance and you want clarity, just put it out there that, you know, you feel guidance, you feel clarity, you know, that type of thing. I, I definitely think that that's very powerful and motivating um, for sure. But at the same time, I don't, I don't feel like that gives me enough of the comfort that I'm looking for per se. Um, I feel like I'm still missing, missing, you know, kind of that grounding wholeness that feels like comforting. I kind of just feel like I'm floating in space and I'm like, like, not that, um, things are meaningless, but just that if you don't, I don't necessarily feel like, I don't know, it's, it's definitely a touchy subject and it's not something that I like, you know, I don't talk about it to like raise controversy or anything, but I just sort of, you know, I, I have a hard time finding my spirituality and, you know, I definitely like certain like Buddhist mindsets and like, you know, going within yourself and not looking towards external things to make you happy or to find peace, you know, looking inward to find peace. I think that that's, of course, like really important and amazing, but it is very, very difficult, at least for me. I know that, you know, something that I really sort of struggle with is the being uncomfortable in my own skin. And I know that I talk, I've talked about before, but like, our bodies are just a vessel, right? And they don't define us. It's not necessarily who we are. But then at the same time, you also want your vessel to align with how you want to be treated, with how you want relationships to be in the world, and with how you want the world to perceive you, right? So, I mean, that being said, you if you don't feel like you're in the best vessel or that you don't feel aligned with yourself, then, I mean, it, it can be really difficult because, you know, you sort of feel like you're in, you're in the wrong shell in a, in a way. And I try to emulate what for myself I would like to look like, but I'm not necessarily you know, like, I, I don't have bleach blonde hair naturally, you know. Um, it's very rare that girls have that. And there are girls that are naturally bleach blonde. And um, it's very, very beautiful. And um, I struggle with, you know, like this, I don't know, this, like, wanting to look like Barbie and to emulate Barbie and to be seen as, like, you know, hyper feminine and to just sort of try, I just feel like I'm trying so hard to fit into this archetype of the blonde, you know, the beautiful blonde archetype that is just so deep within our culture and our minds. And there's just been so much brainwashing as to why like blondes, like blondes have more fun and like the blonde is the pretty girl and like all this stuff and there's so much diversity in beauty and there's so much out there and just because you're blonde doesn't make you anything better or anything but yet um and it's not that I necessarily feel better at all it's that I just am like 
I'm like, okay, all the characters I love, the Barbies that I collect, like, I like the ones, like, I like all different kinds, but the ones with the blonde hair, I'm like, okay, well, I want to emulate that. I want to, I want to give this look to myself. And what's interesting is that I, you know, you fall into this sort of, like, it's a, it's a fine line because you almost feel like you become very narcissistic in worrying about your appearance, at least for myself. Like, I am always thinking about, like, do I look okay? Is everything okay? And, you know, am, you know, am I beautiful? Do I look attractive? How does my face look? How does my body look? How does this and that? And my hair, my roots are coming in. It looks gross. Your hair is fried. It's blah, blah, blah. And just all this like chaos going on. And you just become, for me, I, I don't want to say you just become because that's like insinuating others feel this way. I Just for myself, I like, I don't naturally every day curl my hair like this and put on a full face of makeup. Like for school, I don't wear any makeup at all. I don't do any, I don't style my hair at all. I just leave everything the way it naturally is. I don't put any more thought into it just because there's not enough time and I'm just really tired. So I just sleep in and like I just go to school like just fresh face, normal me. And I just know that my confidence isn't the same without being glammed up. But then at the same time, when I am glammed up, I'm almost like, I just wonder if, I always wonder if what I'm emulating is for the wrong reasons in the sense that like, you know, you want the validation from the world and even from yourself to feel like beautiful. And I, I, I try to tell myself, you know, like, if you know, you're beautiful as a soul and the physical doesn't matter. But then in our world, you know, the physical, the physical does matter in terms of like, you know, how you're perceived and treated. And it's just, you know, I, in my soul, I feel like a, a girly energy and vibe and everything. And I really feel strongly and connect strongly with that. And I feel hyper feminine. But then I wonder if it's like a catch 22 where I try so hard to emulate this because I'm afraid that what I naturally feel isn't enough. And then it's like I want the message to hit home to every individual, like, without them having to get to know me, like, be like, okay, she's hyper feminine or whatever. And it's a really, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, it's not very easy for me to articulate. And I know this is like, this sounds so dumb and it's like, wow, that's, it, it's the least of my worries. I, believe me. I mean, there's way bigger fish to fry in the scheme of the world and myself and what's going on. But just in terms of like, you know, I think that we live in a visual society and, you know, this is just my current experience in the moment. And I think to myself, I'm like, you know, would I know that I'd be the same Athena if I just let my natural hair color grow in. I know that no matter what I look like on the outside, I'll always be me on the inside. And I think that that's what's important. So I tell myself, I'm like, okay, Athena, well, as long as you're always authentically yourself, it shouldn't matter what you look like on the outside. If you want to look like a Barbie, do it and be it. If you want to be ultra feminine, do it, but also still keep the qualities of yourself that aren't ultra feminine. Just because you look, you want to look a certain way doesn't mean you have to dispose of the qualities that you feel that you have. And I, I have characteristics that cannot be feminine or that don't always, you know, lean towards, you know, like delicate and stuff like that. Um, I, I very much am, I allow myself in my most natural state, you know, dance around the house with my hair up in a bun and just let loose and just be free and just feel the energy and the moment. And then when I sit down to make a YouTube video, I'm like, okay, but I want to convey this to the world and I want to, I want to look like this so I can, people can see me as this. And then 
it's like I get this anxiety and this fear and then I'm like I'm curling my hair and I'm nervous and I'm like I just want to make the video I just want to make the video I just want to get it out there I want to have a video where people think I look put together or whatever and it, it becomes this really like I get like agitated and like little things like I just want everything to go perfect and I want it to just all be perfect and just be in control and it's just like it's just huh, like even explaining it is exhausting and then in your heart you just feel like you're just like I just want it to be okay I just want it to be perfect and it, it's like it's so toxic on your body and you feel it and you're like Jeez, girl, like, just relax, take a breath, it's okay, it's okay, and it's okay, and, like, I try and recenter myself, but it's, like, the more that I feel like I put into the, the way I look, the more nervous, almost, I get, and it's, it's very interesting, because I'm also nervous as well if I'm not put together, but, anyways, it's a whole thing, I just, I don't know, I, I don't know if any other, you know, guys or girls, struggle with this I know that it, it's something that affects like a lot of people um, and it's very interesting and I think that you know our bodies if you're in the right mindset then you should be able to customize and modify yourself in any way that you'd like like if you wanna look like a doll then look like a doll like if it's for the right reasons, if it makes you happy internally and you identify with that, or if you want to look like an alien, or if you want to look like anything, or if you want to have a really like dark, edgy look to you, do it, as long as it's for the right reasons. And then other than that, you're fine, you know what I mean? Because if you're doing it for the right reasons, then there's no harm in it. But if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, or there's like some toxicity in your mindset or if you think that you know you have to be this way or not necessarily that you have to be this way but that your your value is based upon how you look that's not the truth like what we look like doesn't determine our value but in our world where we're like visual people it's like we there's so much unfairness in that and that people the way they respond to you if they think that you're attractive and the way that we give people attention and I do it myself I, I mean I'm totally guilty of it and it really bothers me and I I try to allow for each individual to have an equal playing field and to not necessarily give one person more of something because I, I'm more inclined to the way that their shell looks um, that that isn't good to me. I think that everyone should be treated and the same regardless of if they are aesthetically pleasing to you or not, you know, um, and it's, I don't know, it's just, I struggle with, you know, I don't know, I don't know if it's a narcissism thing where I you know, I'm like, even my YouTube channel, like, I want to, I want to convey to the world that I'm, I want to be beautiful. That I'm like the, the idols that I idolize and love, like Daryl Hannah and, you know, Barbie and a bunch of other, like, really gorgeous women. I, there's countless women and I love all kinds of beauty and diversity and all of that. And, but I want to be one of them. And, I just, it's, it just sucks because I feel like I'd be so much freer as a person if I could adopt the mentality, like, I, you know, it's sort of like Buddhist mentality to kind of, um, it's not necessarily that you don't care about appearance, but like, I don't, I don't think like, you know, doing things like, I don't know, like worrying so much and putting so much emphasis on just a shell. Like, this is just a shell. This is nothing. Like, this is not, this is not me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm me inside. That's my consciousness and my personality and my soul. That's me. And that's what's important. And then it's like, it's just funny because for someone that is aware of that and then to still struggle like I'm aware that this like 
this is just tissue and skin and cells and it, it's just a vessel that contains everything and then and that's it and it's doing its job and it doesn't have to do anything else it doesn't have to be beautiful spectacular amazing it doesn't have to be all those things it's already doing everything that it's supposed to do which is keep you alive and I mean I just think that I don't know I just it's just something I really struggle with and I think if I put more value into myself without looking at Athena externally and more value in my core self, that I'd feel a lot more peace than I feel trying to modify and to try and make this vision I have for myself come to the outside and, you know, be how it is, like to articulate a vision. I think that if I was able to put the love and support and the, the beauty back into myself in my soul and tell myself that that's where, that that's where I need to be focusing my attention, then I think that'd be much more fulfilling in the long run when you do start to age and when, you know, you don't want to be, I don't want to be one of those women who obsessively, you know, check the mirror for wrinkles or have like tons of lotions and potions and creams and you know and just be so worried about aging and or feeling like my worth goes down and that's like an ageism thing in our culture and you know to be like you know you're you're young you're young physically once but you can be young internally forever and it's scary that our society idealizes the youngest, the freshest type of thing and then you know you feel like you want to hold on to that forever and you don't want to let it go but that's definitely not like the meaning of life like you know life is stages and then unfortunately in our world we've just put such emphasis on this is just a stage it's almost like romanticized to be young and all this kind of stuff I mean being young is hard like you're I mean, for myself, I feel pretty dumb. Like, I don't know a lot about how to operate in the world and figure stuff out. You know, this is just one stage in the course of a lifetime. And it's sad that it's just so focused upon in our media and movies and world and that the ageism thing is very, very real. And, you know, I, I would like to not be a part of that and I would like to feel and it's just something that I notice in myself and that I know that I just wonder if this journey of trying to like showcase an image that I think is beautiful and to aesthetically pleasing to myself and to try and convey that in videos regardless of what I'm saying just to prove myself to everyone and the world. I don't think I'm ever going to get the validation that I'm looking for. I think that the only validation that I need is from myself and I just got to figure out how to give it to myself. But yeah, that's <laughs> just something, you know, just open, open thoughts, I guess. And uh, yeah, there's so many other topics too I want to talk with, about so we can switch gears and talk about something else. I also never really record myself being like wacky and like goofy in any of my videos. I know that I do a little bit but like I'm a really goofy person when I'm by myself and when I mean if I'm like really comfortable and I really want to share that more with you guys because like I like to be really goofy and funny and just like ridiculous and cringy because that's just like what I'm best at. So I hope that I can really you know just sort of like relax and um share that with you guys. There's this um, interview with this girl that I really like. Okay, okay, so I had to just rewatch the clip right now to remember what exactly she says, but he's like, he's like, um, don't you think you have more haters than fans? And she's like, I'm just smiling. Come on. <laughs> it's so funny. I love it. And she has a really cute accent.
and <laughs> just the way that she like blows it off she's like whatever I don't care I was like yes girl get it I love it I love that attitude <laughs> so that was really funny to me hi Monet hi hello <laughs> Monet do you want to say hi Monet <laughs> she's like what are you doing? But yeah, so I mean, I, there, I'm always like quoting, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race and stuff, and all these shows and movies and all this stuff, and I just, I, I really like to be goofy and funny, and like, I just have all these weird references that, like, I don't think people like that interview. Like, I've been saying, "Come on!" Like all this morning, and no one knows what I'm talking about. But I mean, it's just like I have all these inside jokes, like with myself, and. <laughs> Yeah, so, I don't know, it's, it's fun, right? But, yeah, so. No way! No way! But, um, yeah, let's see, what else should we talk about? I had a couple things that I wanted to talk about for sure, um, in this video, like this chatty get ready with me. Um, what's another fun topic? Um... Well, um, there was this um, thing I was reading about, and it was saying that we've like predicted that eventually, you know, the universe will like um, I don't know. It's like kind of there's like a couple different theories as to like what will happen with the universe, and um, just basically that the universe and like this whole plane of existence will just like cease to exist, and we'll just be like mist in the galaxy and like nothing, you know, the whole thing is just going to implode on itself or something like that. It's something to do with like, there's a couple different theories on how it's going to happen, but basically they've said that eventually, you know, in millions of millions of millions of millions of years, the universe is just going to cease to exist or whatever. And, um, I don't know if it's the whole universe or just earth or what it is, but you know, that is really scary and unfortunate that we know that and it it just adds to the confusion and the what is going on, why am I here question to life. And you know, I don't know. It, that to me, like it really like it, I know I'm like I'm like the earth is gonna end, but <laughs> I'm not happy about that at all. Um, and it makes me really sad and like a despair in my heart and body and feeling and just everything. And there's this feeling of wanting permanence and of wanting to always exist and to not miss out and to like, and I think that that's a part of the reason I have YouTube is because I want to document myself so that I will be here even when I'm gone. And I mean, what if one day the internet, like, shuts off completely and everything on YouTube gets deleted? I mean, I would feel terrible if I'm, like, 80 years old and then all that foot I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll look back and be like, thank God that was deleted. But, I mean, it just sucks that, like, at this point in my life, I want that permanence and I want to be able to, like, keep myself here. I don't want to let go of life. I want to still keep it going even when I'm not here and I mean and I always want to be alive like I want to be here for millions of years in the future and I mean I, I don't want to die and it really it really scares me and you know I hope that there's like you know I just have so many fantasy ideas of really really hoping and wishing that you know, we do go somewhere after we die, and, like, our soul does everything, like, and this is something else that I was thinking about, you know, if I expect, you know, a happy ending when I die, I would want the same for each living creature and individual in the world. Every ant that gets stepped on, every cockroach that someone smashes every spider that gets smacked with the broom into oblivion, I would want all of their souls to go somewhere as well in a positive and beautiful place. I don't think that 
heaven should just be for human beings or the idea of an afterlife. Like, I think that if I want an afterlife for myself, every living being deserves an afterlife as well. And, you know, I just, what scares me is I'm like, that would have to, I mean, there must be a lot of room in this afterlife or in this state. And it's just something that I really struggle to like, you know, to understand and to feel comfortable with. And I get, it's just, it, it can be really hard. And, you know, I, I struggle with looking at life in a very, um, not morbid way, but like, in a very uncomforting way and it's really hard on me like it really it really gets in the way and you know the idea of not being permanent really scares me and that's something as a human being that I just you know I really I really fear not feeling not sensing not being conscious anymore like that is terrifying to me um and it, it's just really scary. So I got a lot of books at the library about, like, life after death and the supernatural and, like, all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to be doing a lot of reading on that and that type of stuff. Um, and hopefully that helps, you know, helps me. I think it'll be a lifetime, like, you know, thing I'll have to work on my whole life to sort of deal with and understand or at least try to understand. But, yeah. So that's something else, you know. But... Now I'm just going to go in with this um, shine spray for my hair because it is, it doesn't look like it because it's heat sprayed right now, but my hair is fried to the gods. Fried to the gods, so, um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So... Let's see, what else? I'm sorry, I don't mean for all my topics to be, like, depressing or anything. That's not, I just, these are just thoughts that go on in my mind that I really want to articulate and share and have out there so that, um, I don't know, that maybe other people can sort of, you know, feel like someone understands or, you know, they, they get it and that type of thing, um, and that they're not alone and, you know... I really like when people just speak organically and they just say what's on their mind and what they're dealing with. I find that very comforting. Um, I'm just going to go in with a little bit more concealer and this is like super brightening so I might look like crazy for a second but we will blend it out. I'll blend it out, don't worry, I'll blend it out. <laughs> I just really, really like, like, super light under eyes. I promise. I know I look like a clown right now, but I'll blend it out, guys. It's going to look worse until it starts to look better, right? <laughs> So what else is there to talk about? I, know. I think because this side had more product on it, that's why it looks like so extreme, but let's see if I can like buff it out a little bit. Okay, maybe a little more blush to just liven it back up. I know you guys are probably like, oh my god, this girl's crazy. <laughs> but I, I like, like, you know, full coverage Barbie makeup. So um, I know if it's a little intense <laughs> for you guys, I, I understand. I understand. Okay. 
Now let's go in with some highlighter. Let's get highlighted. So what else am I thinking of talking about? Hmm. I don't know. I had a lot of ideas for this, you know, talk through, get ready with me thing. Oh, um, something um, interesting that, I don't know, I don't know if I want to go in that direction actually, but something happened and these people were not very nice to me. And, um, I, I just really wish that people were more mindful about their actions towards other people and the way that they behave. And, you know, I just wish people were a little bit friendlier. Um, I really do. I'm surprised that I still come across like, you know, immature behavior and, for like no reason, you know, like it's, it's surprising. You think like once you're an adult and you're in an adult setting, you wouldn't find that. But I mean, you definitely do. Um, I just think as people, we should, you know, be, be a lot kinder to each other. You know, it's, that's really important. So now I'm going to go in with this, um, model's own, uh, moonlight, Sculpt and Glow Highlight Stick. So I'm going to put this on my chest and just like um, highlight this area kind of on my neck and like that. And then, okay, so now I'm just going to go in and blend in the body highlighter, the body like glitter shine thing. So it's just like that, and it gives you like a more glowy, a glowy kind of look. So, yeah. I always get like little itches on my face once I have my makeup on, and I'm like, oh my god, if you touch your face, it just turns into like a Picasso painting with makeup. You're just like, Ash, and it gets all like nasty. Um, let's see. Hmm. I guess it's kind of, I don't know, it's interesting. Maybe I'll just shut up. Maybe if I just shut up, then something will come to my mind to talk about. So I apologize if I'm quiet for a little while while I'm finishing up my makeup, but I'm just seeing where my train of thought goes. And I'm hunting for my lip liner. something to talk about. Well, that didn't take long, huh, guys? You're like, wow, she couldn't stay quiet for a second. No. <laughs> um, I watched clips of the movie Mother with um, Jennifer Lawrence, and I forget the other guy's name, but he's absolutely gorgeous. Um, both of them are just beautiful, beautiful actors, amazing, amazing actors. Um, and the movie Mother is directed by Darren Aronofsky, who directed Black Swan and Requiem for a Dream, which, I mean, those movies have changed my life. And so did Mother. I mean, just he's a really incredible director. Um, and so, yeah, they, the movie just... I don't want to give any spoilers, so if you don't want a spoiler, just skip to the next part of the video. But it, I just highly recommend watching this movie. Um, it's so highly analytical on the different things that we're dealing with and facing in our society and the chaos and the confusion and the heaviness and the trauma and the war and the hatred and the obsession of just people and, I mean, just the lust or the abuse and the everything. It's just all happening in this house um, that Jennifer Lawrence and her husband live in and just it's just so it's such an interesting look at you know Adam and Eve Mother Earth Father Earth you know like trying to keep peace and harmony in the world and like corruption and you know just all these elements in humanity and it's just so fascinating I mean just an amazing movie. I highly recommend it. Highly. You know, 
sounds funny. This isn't actually the lip liner I was looking for. I thought it was, but it's not. I'm looking for this one that's like a rosy color, and this one's like, that one was like a brownie kind of color. Oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah, I love this rose color. It's like my favorite. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, that movie makes me think so much, and it really, you know, it makes me question humanity and human beings and how our actions are. Like, I mean, it really... I mean, I think human beings are like, you know, we operate in a very animal, I, I don't even want to say animalistic because that's offensive to the animals. Like, we operate in this very odd, you know, primal way. I don't even know if primal is the right word. In, even in 2018, like, humanity is very very interesting to say the least and like I said before humans have done some really amazing things and there's a lot of beauty and wonderful things in the world but there's also a lot of really dark dark um, issues and themes and messages and actions that happen to so many people and it's really really a shame and it's definitely really scary like as a human being you know to know that you're essentially no different than the rest of humans because, you know, I'm a human like everybody else. Um, I just, yeah, I kind of see the world in a more, I used to, I guess my mind is opening for the, for a long time I've thought, I've thought about this, but then I wonder more and more that, you know, there really isn't a governing quality to humanity, like the good and the bad, like we're, we really are just in the gray, there's no black and white, we're just in the gray completely. Like, there's no overpowering characteristic of humanity that's inherently good or evil. It's just a mix, and it's this very, very complex, selfish, but hopeful and giving, but taking, and deceitful destruction, creation, all these things. And, you know, I guess it's just so mind-boggling in a sense. Yeah. I kind of like that style where girls use like a darker lip line and then they just have like a lighter, a lighter shade within the lips. I think that's like really pretty.
got a little bit on my teeth. Oops. I wish the lip liner was like a little bit lighter, but say la vie. What can you do, you know? Um, let's see. I'm going to go over. I thought I had like, there's a gloss that I have that can like definitely tone the color down a little bit. Um, I might use that, but I just use a trick where I just press my um, finger into the lipstick to kind of take away a lot of the pigment. And kind of just like buff it out a little bit. I'm going to go in with a little bit of highlighter on the inner corner of my eye. So I'm going to do that next. If I can find this one brush I'm thinking of in particular. There we go. I got it. So I just apply that right into the uh, center of the eye to just open it up and just make it nice and bright. And I'm going to put a little bit of the shade. just gives it like a really three-dimensional look. Yeah, just like that. I just really love that like overly done, like kind of cakey Barbie look. Like I, I like that like overdone look a little bit. And see, I do like natural beauty. I absolutely do. I do. I'm a fan of all different forms of expression of beauty but one of the forms that I do like is that like overly done up kind of kind of look I do I do really love that um, yeah so this is the finished makeup look for today's video and I want to make another video for YouTube um, I hope you guys are having a great day thank you for hanging out with me thank you for watching this video thank you for 200 um, not 200 sorry 150 subscribers right now that is so amazing thank you guys so 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 much i love you guys so much more than anything i'm so grateful for the awesome people i've met on youtube and that i interact with and watch their channels it's amazing i love you guys thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in my next video okay bye love you guys